Hello students I am Dr Ritwik Jagandhe and today we are going to discuss the next module of human resource management which is concerned with evolution and scope of the human resources management in this first part we are mainly going to discuss the evolution of hrm in this module we are going to primarily discuss about different stages of evolution of hrm basically different scholars have given different types of evolution models but the most popular ones are these so basically we can easily divide uh, the history or the evolution of hrm into these five parts which are the early philosophy which is basically a period of uh, 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 1900 and before so up to 1900 then second uh, period is uh, from 1900 to 1920 these two decades then third period is uh, between 1920 to 1930 and then fourth segment of the evolution is again two decades which is uh, from 1930 to 1950 and the next one is the modern times what we call which is basically uh, 1950 onwards so uh, these are the historical uh, benchmarks of the evolution of human resource management as a scientific discipline or the discipline of management then lastly we shall discuss about three popular stages of growth of hrm so that is going to be the outline of this particular talk first period is early philosophy which is basically a time period up to 1900 so all the time up to 1900 is covered under this particular period the main highlights of this period are basically the philosophical grounding of the development of hrm which is uh the book of robert owen and the book is a new view of society so this is the book which has really drawn the attention of people of those people who have really contributed into developing the philosophy of human resources management this book was written in 1830 this book basically talks about the need for better industrial relations and improvements in the service conditions so these two things are basically the main content of this particular book this era was basically the era of development of cordial liberal and paternalistic attitudes towards the worker this was the main contribution of this particular book and this particular era the others who contributed for this era are j s mill andrew yule and charles beveridge and there were many more who were the contemporaries of robert owen who really contributed to this particular era and in which way did they contribute they contributed in terms of developing new ideas like wage in incentives profit sharing and labor welfare along with it whatever was associated with the welfare of laborers it was all basically got strengthened in this particular era it is also said that uh, robert owen was a very kind person and he created a lot of houses uh, in his factory premises for the la laborers and uh, he took many other initiatives for the labor welfare next we come to discuss the second phase of the hrm which is known as the productivity and efficiency movement or efficiency and productivity movement because these two decades are very important from the point of view of efficiency in the human resources management or efficiency in the factory setup because this area this era was completely dominated by the scientific management theory and scientific management thought so basically you can say that uh, the principles of frederick vincent taylor f w taylor were basically the dominant uh, principles in this particular era it was at that particular time period which was influenced by that uh, uh, 4m theory do you uh, if you remember that 4m theory which basically uh, says man management is all about man money 
machine and material so basically at that point in time engineers were really uh, quite influential and they were the ones who really derived this particular thought process so you can say during this last year of 19th century uh, the age of efficiency and productivity movement arrived actually and uh, these two decades are basically dedicated to the management thought again as you can see uh, as the main contributor and main influencer was uh, taylor uh, so the engineering things were quite dominant for example uh, things like size of units introduction of uh, scientific thinking into the day to day uh, factory processes and job analysis job role job standard costing of the unit so and also the selection procedure training of workers in every aspect the scientific thought and scientific thinking was basically promoted so this particular era and in particular these two decades 1900 to 1920 are the ones which are dedicated to principles like efficiency and productivity so you can see in every aspect these two terms were very very important next we enter into the phase of welfareism and industrial psychology this was only a very small period you can see only from 1920 to 1930 this one decade has been hi highlighted as a industrial and organizational psychology why it is so because in this period if you see by 1925 staff line organization things were quite dominant so by that time people were able to understand that okay this particular department which is called hr department is a kind of department which has to manage the employee records which has to manage the employee services and which is basically he here for the uh, basically the o supervision of the staff so everything pertaining to the staff component you, you see industrial and organizational psychology was dominant component and industrial psychologists developed many new techniques like psychological testing interviewing worker training and non financial incentives so how to manage the staff how to keep them motivated was basically the fundamental behind this particular thing so at that point in time uh, industrial and organizational psychological aspects were dominant over this particular function so we call them uh, 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 we call it a period of uh, welfareism and industrial psychology so you see slowly the psychological aspect creeped into human resources management furthermore this period helped to give a professional form to human resource management this was perhaps the time when people at large the community at large the, even the society and the scientific community at large for the very first time recognized that this is something called psychology and this is a psychology of the workplace so they named it organizational psychology so at that point in time people were not talking about human resources management but they used to say industrial psychology or organizational psychology and things like that again the hrm began to be realized as a profession and specialist function but at least some sort of recognition was obtained by this period therefore we call this period is of period of industrial psychology the next two decades are very important which are from 1930 to 1950 why do i say this that they are very important because in the previous lecture also i had highlighted that hawthorne experiments were conducted in these two periods and as you know professor alton mayo from harvard university in america he created and he did a number of experiments which ultimately did what which ultimately resulted into the recognition of hrm as a science of people people science or human science for the very first time in the field of uh, management which was quite dominated by engineers and industrial engineering thoughts for the very first time uh, those people really recognized the value of human motivation and that was i think in my view Uh, the turning point for the evolution of the human resource management as someone rightly said commodity concept of labor changed to social concept it means 
prior to this particular time period the human resources were used to be treated like a commodity but then later on the view of the human resources changed to the social concept it means uh, people started really first of all treating them as a resource but a social resource some something human something which needs a human treatment so this period is known as period of human relations therefore this this particular period we have named it as a period of human relations furthermore during these two decades many new techniques were developed for the selection training induction of the workers at the same time philosophy of human resources management flourished and it became more and more people oriented this is a key word here whenever you are attempting an answer you have to mention this particular point very eloquently and very emphatically that this these two decades were basically a time period where hrm got the human face and people all around the discipline started talking about uh, fringe benefits and uh, further different modes of uh, uh, labor welfare lastly we come to discuss the modern times which is the period post 1950s now you shall ask why after 1950s we have not been able to uh, further bi- bifurcate the the time period that is because that was not felt proper because by this time the discipline was in a way mature and we could uh, find that there is no further need to bifurcate it to make it another era why these era have been classified like this there is a reason behind it because every era signifies something signifies a particular milestone for example the the period before 1900 it really signifies the philosophical grounding for any discipline to grow you require a philosophical grounding so that is there in uh, the first era which is before 1900 in the second two decades 1900 to 1920 they really talked about the scientific management so since that time was heavily dominated by thought scientific thought scientific management thought of taylor uh, so that period was that scientific uh, that period was overly emphasized by a productivity and efficiency kind of things then then there came uh, people who talked about this is treated something this is to be treated something differently so from 1930 to 19 1920 to, to 1930 that is this 10 years we talked about hrm as a as a separate discipline from from engineering thought so it at least got a recognition of a different discipline and then from 1930 to 1950 it really obtained its true face which is human face and then from 1950 onwards it has been constantly developing but developing as a human resource management developing as a science which you know today what you know that is human resources management so basically the citizenship concept came that means we talk about citizenship behavior citizenship uh, concept of labor where the workers have full right to be consulted in determining the rules and regulations under which they work so uh, in this era we really talk about uh, the the workers being uh, their own uh, uh, destiny deciders it means they should be able to decide empowered enough to decide under which rules they should work so that kind of uh, worker empowerment kind uh, empowerment kind of thought actually prevailed into this after 1960 this concept further modified and actually became uh, like uh, a behavioral science approach so we started talking about uh, understanding human mind uh, in a scientific manner so uh, th- it basically uh, resulted into Uh, understanding the organizational behavior of people so slowly you see the hr got a backing of human organizational behavior so even today uh, you see uh, the organizational behavior is considered a back end tool of the human resources management human resources management is treated as a front end tool and the science which which it is based on is called organizational behavior so it gained that form it started gaining that form post 1950 after 1970 the belief of open social and industrial system became very popular for business organizations and today hrm is a fully developed discipline so this is basically after 1970s you can say the hrm 
it became the fully developed discipline and today the different consulting firms are proudly providing their consultation services for the different problems pertaining to human resources of the organization all this has been possible only after 1970s because only after 1970 1970s the business organizations have developed to this extent another angle uh, to view this is basically as i already told growth and development and evolution of hrm labor welfare uh, and personal management now these are basically the different eras historically but this last slide is basically talking about different stages of human growth why because when we talk about evolution of a particular discipline say here human resources management we must take a look of the different stages of growth also so as of now we have discussed only the historical periods which are very very important and relevant and most commonly accepted here some uh, authors have also talked about three different stages of the human resources management development and the first stage of them is which is known as labor welfare stage second stage is personal management stage and third stage is third stage is hrm stage and the last which is basically now coming up is known as strategic human resources management why do we call it strategic human resources management is because people believe that the goals of organizations are very very important and the goal of hr department or the goal of human resources management or the way human resources of the organizations are managed should be in line with the organizational objectives so if the hr objectives are pointing towards this the organizational objectives it they should contribute further towards the objectives of the organizations so basically the hr objectives should be in line with the objectives of organization that thought process is basically known as strategic human resources management so uh, the three uh, stages rather four stages of development we don't we don't call it this a, a stage of development so because it is still ev still evolving so we call it strategic human resources as a separate discipline but three stages are labor labor welfare stage labor welfare lw second stage is uh, personal management stage and third stage is hrm stage in labor welfare stage you can understand everything pertaining to only labor welfare all the welfare initiatives uh, they they are basically uh, talking about labor welfare so housing uh, finance uh, leaves all only labor related uh, thing because the, at that point in time only industry laborers were there as a uh, subject matter of the concern then second stage came of uh, personal management where we started talking about the employees not just the workers uh, who are working at the industrial level but the employees of uh, different organizations working in different settings so that stage became the second stage which is known as known as personal management further improvement came when the services sector came into the picture when services sector came into the picture different types of services were also covered and different new practical problems actually emerged and while dealing with those problems new literature got developed which is actually covered into human resources management so we started with the labor welfare thought labor welfare practice we uh, went through passed through uh, passed through personal management things and now we are running into human resources management things. so you see the constant evolution is happening and now as i already told uh, now we are even talking about uh, hr practices should be in line with the goals of the organization so we are now talking about strategic human resources management so this has been a very brief description of the evolution of hrm students in the next part of this particular module we shall discuss the scope of hrm thank you